coming around the bend I ain't seen the sunshine since I, I don't know when Cause I'm stuck in Folsom Prison Time keeps dragging on Hello and welcome to the latest video Long awaited from Bikes, Guns, Life, the Universe and everything uh, so yeah, basically this one is, is about why PCPs are, are, are better than springers, just to be uh, make things even. So anyway, a few months ago I made a film asking why are spring rifles better than PCPs? It got a fair few views. It ruffled a few feathers, and many people left comments based on the title rather than watching the video, strongly stating that there was no way a Springer could beat a PCP. But to put the video in context, I'm probably more than halfway through my life, and I was nursing my dying father, and I was feeling nostalgic for my past. Spring air rifles were like a strong link to that past, and an even stronger link, my father, was about to pass forever into the next world. A lot of people got in touch, most were sympathetic and many had stories of their own fathers to share, and their reliance on spring rifles to help connect them to those hazy, happy and halcyon days of their youth shooting with their dads in the back garden. I struck a chord with them, and their stories did strike a chord with me. Many air rifle channels are obsessed with accuracy, and obviously accuracy is really important. It's as important as it gets when talking about guns, but it does not tell the whole story. Anyway, in honour of my dad, and indeed everyone's dad, uncle, big brother, or whoever got you into shooting, I'm dedicating this video. And if anyone wants to share their air rifle story on the comments section, feel free. If there is enough material, and if you want me to, I'll read it out loud and make a whole new video just about other people's stories. And so, my friend who has kindly lent me his HW100 that I'm shooting now, he's allowing me to hang on to it for a bit longer. So I thought I'd pitch it against my own HW57 FTS and see if a Springer really can get close to a PCP on accuracy. This HW100 looks to be a KT carbine. Probably relatively old, but recently back from a gunsmith and so shooting really, really sweetly. I mean, so much has been written about this rifle that I, I certainly don't have much to contribute. I will say though, that it is good looking, it is well made and very, very accurate. This one is 0.22. It's making 11.5 foot-pounds using a 15.9 grain pellet, uh, a Superfield pellet by RWS. The scope is a Simmons Rec Retech. Retech. Uh, and it's nothing special, but it's a 2.8 by 10 by 44. Uh, it's perfectly adequate for, for this rifle, absolutely. You know, it's it's certainly not over or under scoped. So that's that. And then moving on to the uh, the HW57 FTS. Uh, I forget what FTS stands for, but it it's got a slightly different stock to the to the standard one. Uh, it's quite a new rifle, and this one has been pretty well tuned uh, by the guy who had it before. Uh, 
and power is, is, is lower than it was. It's lower than standard, but the gun is really smooth and accurate. Uh, these are not anywhere near the, the cult status of the HW77 or the HW97. It, obviously, it's an underlever, so it's the same. And I believe that this one is from the, the era where it's got the same underlever mechanism as the 77 and the 97. Uh, but the, the advantage it does have is that it's uh, two pound lighter than the aforementioned 77, which means it's lighter to carry about, but has less mass to tame recoil. And I think this is why the guy who had it before slightly detuned it, because it had quite a bit of muzzle flip. I mean, that could have been tamed with a weight, maybe, uh, but he decided to tune it. I think he glided the piston and did a few other bits and bobs to it, so it shoots really nice. Uh, I fitted a Simmons Whitetail Classic 1.5 by 5 by 20 scope, uh, which is, is perfectly adequate for this. I've also put it on a slightly higher mount that I just had lying around uh, because I've got a large head and the it was just too with the the uh with the other skate rails it was just too low so it's kind of raised up there on that on that thing. Uh it's it's a two two the same as the uh HW hundred and it makes uh it's actually gone up a little bit in power I guess that's because it's it's getting used now. Uh, so it's eleven foot pounds or just under using the same 5.9, uh, 15.9 grain pellet. So uh, that's an introdu introduction to them. I'm gonna get along and shoot them now and see see, see what, what, the, what the accuracy is, uh, the difference between two very decent rifles. Okay. I shot the HW100 first using the RWS Superdome. They weighed 15.9 grains. I've measured its muzzle report with and without its screw on uh, Virarc suppressor. So to compare it uh, with the HW57, the 100 was 125.4 decibels with the silencer, and without it, was a shrieking 145.5 decibels. The 57 was 134.6 decibels with the suppressor, which I borrowed from the 100, and 140.8 decibels without. So uh, relatively quiet, even without the uh, suppressor. Uh, and going on, I, I don't have a compressor and I would have to go on a journey to get my diving bottle filled and that seems to be a bit of a boring chore so I use a pump to top off the HW100 air cylinder. It takes about five minutes to get to the top of the green zone on the air gauge. I've never counted but I think maybe it gives around 120 to 150 full power shots. Uh, it's pretty consistent uh, it's got about three meters per second spread over five shots through a chrono. Uh, the the fifty seven, the HW fifty seven, of course that doesn't need an air bottle or a pump. 
it just needs a reasonable right arm or a left arm to get it ready to shoot. Surprisingly, it's even more consistent than the HW100 by about one meter per second. Uh, this is pretty amazing for a Springer and I did not expect it. I mean, I, I've, I've actually lost the numbers that I took from the Chrono, but there was a lot less variation in the HW57. Uh, uh, so anyway, but so as a shooter, I know that a good trigger can make the difference between accuracy and missing. Uh, both rifles have really good triggers, but I'd say that the HW100 is far more pleasant to use, uh, which has to help in accuracy. And so, finally, moving on to accuracy. Uh, in my first video that I made about Springers versus PCPs, many of the, the comments stated a Springer is inferior to a PCP, based purely on the outcome of each shot. Now, I understand that there's a huge variation in cost of springers and a huge variation, especially these days, with costs with PCPs. And it would be interesting to get a, a cheap PCP and put it up against an ex expensive springer or even a cheap springer, you know, but just to see. Uh, I think it might be quite surprising. But some people said, like, any PCP will beat any springer. And, and I just... I don't buy it. I mean, you know, a PCP is, is far more consistent. That's what we're told by the, the advertisers and, you know, the channels that get paid to say so. So based purely on each shot, you would say that a PCP is going to be more consistent. But like I say, in this case, over a chronograph, the, the 57 is more consistent than a freshly rebuilt uh, HW100. I mean, logically, I agree that a PCP should be more accurate, uh, and shooting is about hitting what you are aiming at, and it is generally accepted that a PCP is better at hitting targets. Uh, however, they are a massive pain, PCPs. They're complicated, they're expensive, uh, when they break, they're you know, not as simple as a Springer. And magazine-fed PCPs are incredibly pellet-hungry. Uh, and if they are so infallible, then why is it that in this test, the 100 does not seem to be any better than the 57? So... There's three shots here, three shots there, five shots there, and three shots here, and pretty much the same one here. So three, three, four, and then another four. Now, uh, you know, don't bother about where they are in relation to the to the black dots. That's not that's not what is important here. It's more about the grouping. So the HW100 has got three in there. So, but here, they're all over the place, which is weird because on that bit, they're all over the place as well, the same dot. I don't know how that happened. Uh, here, you've got three going through two holes. And then four. And, you know, this seems to me... That's about the size of a 10 pence piece. And as is that. So really on here, I'm not seeing a massive advantage. So. The targets were shot one after the other. It was slightly rainy, slightly windy. And I used a small tripod on the kitchen table with sofa cushions propping up the stock. The range was 32 meters, that's 105 feet, or 35 yards. The HW100 took half the time to shoot the same number of shots, and I tried my very average best with both rifles. I was surprised, but it does not look to me as if the HW100 has, was any better than the HW57, which is annoying, as I expected to honourably concede 
that while springers are more fun, cheaper and simpler to shoot, ultimately they were inferior to PCPs on accuracy. I don't know. I'm just some amateur messing around in my kitchen. I can't edit for shit. I apparently talk too much. I'm an awful shot, but it seems to me that a HW57 that costs roughly half of what a HW100 costs, and that isn't including all the ancillaries you need with a PCP, pretty much held its own on accuracy. This was going to be my last video on this subject, but I may need to test my Air Arms S400 Classic against a Springer, because I've got, I suspect that that's more accurate than the HW100. And it seems to me that the majority of air rifle channels that you, that you perhaps watch are sponsored and they never seem to have anything negative to say about any product they feature. And they are encouraging you to spend an awful lot of money on PCP air rifles and all that goes with it. And they're saying that everyone, that come, you know, the one that comes out the next year and the one that comes out the year after that is better and better and better. I mean, by now, it should be almost impossible to miss with a PCP. So I don't buy that either. But, you know, I, I don't get sponsored by anybody. I'm not constrained by anything. So I'll always try my objective best to convey what I think is the truth. And that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching if you got this far. And uh, I'll see you next time.